Hi and welcome to Geeks for Geeks. In this video, we would be discussing the problem: count possible ways to construct buildings. Okay. So in this problem, we are given an n, the number of plots on either side of the road. Like there would be a road, and there would be some plots on either side. Okay. And we need to find the total ways to construct building in the plot such that there is a space between any two buildings. It means that suppose one can be depicted as building. Okay, let's just take okay one as a building and zero as a plot. Okay, so you can say that one zero one is valid, but one one zero is not valid. Because you need to leave a space between any two buildings. Okay, fair enough. So now, suppose star represent a plot. So this can be star also. Okay, and then for n three, the plots can be represented as like this. Like there would be three plots here, three plots at this side. Okay, so as the number of possible combination for the test case, first test case is twenty five. So let us just evaluate for one. For one, suppose there is a road in between. Okay, suppose there is a road in between. Okay, so in this road here, I can have a building here. Okay, and I don't have a building here. Or what I can do is, I can don't have a building here. I can have a building here. Or what I can do is, I can have a building at both sides. Or I don't have a building at either of them. These are all the possible combination which won't clash with the condition and it would respect all the condition that is given itself. Okay, fair enough. So now we proceed forward. Okay, we proceed forward. Proceeding forward, we can see that for two. The possible combinations can be one zero, okay, or zero one, or zero one, or one zero. So we can see that the possible number of combination here is one zero and one zero, and here we have two us itself. So the number of possible combination here is two, and the number of possible combination that we have is two. So we can say. That this side multiplied with the number of possible combination with this side. Why? I would tell you. Suppose we have one, two, three, and here we have just four and five. So one can be clubbed with four. One can be clubbed with five. In the same way, two can be clubbed with four, and two can be clubbed with four. Two can be clubbed with five. Three can be clubbed with four, and three can be clubbed with five. So how many cases we have? We have. Three multiplied by two, so we can say that for constituting the value, okay, for summing up the value on both sides, if we calculate the value on one side and multiply it with the number of possible combination with the other side, then we would have the result. We have this result like this. So, as the condition, we found that what is one, two, and this side was four and five. But suppose the number of possible combination is absolutely the same. Like here also we have three plots, and here also we have three plots. So if we just found the value of this one, then automatically we can find the value by suppose this value is n, then the total value that the answer would be nothing but n multiplied by n itself, and we would have the solution. So now we know that we need to just find one solution. But if we move forward, so now the problem occurs to finding solution on one side. Find solution on one side of it. This is the problem now itself. Now let us solve for the one side. If for one side we already de decided that one would be the building. And zero would be the plot that is still left where nothing is built. So the number of possible suppose the value is three. Okay, the value is three itself. Now we found to find out the value. So if we found out the value, the values can be zero. Okay, so what are the possible values that we can have? Then we would find 
the negative one. So we have three plots up till now. So we have like three plots up till now. So for the value three, for the value three, we would first go to zero. That is, we don't build a plot. The next we would go is we would go and build the plot at the very end. Then we would move forward. Okay, we would move forward and we would build a plot like this. And then we would build a plot here itself. Now the next possible combination is that we would build up a plot here. Next possible combination is we would build up a plot here. The next is that we build up here itself. Okay. And by doing all this, we have zero, one, two, three. Okay. And we missed out the case where we have zero, one, one. Okay. These are all the possible combination. So if we take out the valid ones, like this is a valid one, 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 this is a valid, but this is not valid because they are at the adjacent side. They don't have a spacing in between. This is not valid. This is not valid. So how many values we have? We have one, two, three, four, five. So if we have five multiplied by five, that is equals to 25. And if you go to the first sample test case, then for the flat three, three values, the sample test case is five. This is how we have the value itself. Okay, so we are going on the correct direction. But if you observe that this question is nothing, but you can relate it with a very standard question like finding the number of binary string binary string with no adjacent one okay like there can be adjacent zero but there can't be adjacent one now this is a very standard problem which has appeared in many well-known companies so let us first declare this problem in this problem we would just find the value then we would multiply to this value and we would have the value let us move proceed forward so to pr follow, proceed forward what we would do is we would first declare an array zi and we would also declare an array what or let's say like this 0i 0i and 1i 0i would count the number of strings ending with the value 0 count of strings ending with zero and one would do the same thing ending with one okay so now we know that this would be we would declare two array and we would solve this using the paradigm idea of dynamic programming okay so now first in dynamic programming the first thing we should think of is to solve the smallest one like we do in recursion Recursion is dynamic program is nothing but an optimized recursion. So if it is an optimized version of recursion, then we should think in terms of recursion. Like the first thing we should do is think in terms of base case. Base case is the smallest valid case that we can solve by ourselves. So if we have just one value, then the count of the string ending with zero would be nothing but zero of one. Okay. Length is i. So if the length is one, like we can have only one length. Then ending with zero that means only one so the one length string ending with zero is just one okay and one length string ending with one in the same way is one so we decided the base case now we should move forward and we should decide the intermediate case okay now for the intermediate case i would just tell you that zero of i zero of i okay suppose the ending value okay zero of i ended with zero so after zero we can build up a plot or we can leave it empty we can do both things so we can say that zero of i is nothing but zero of i minus one plus one of i minus one simple in the same way now think of one of i one of i's after one there is no option but to move forward with zero because the next value to make it a valid string we need to keep it zero so this would be nothing 
बट जीरो ऑफ आई माइनस वन सच एंड देन एट द एंड वी जस्ट नीड टू रिटर्न वैलिड स्ट्रिंग so this is also valid ending with zero is also valid ending with one is also valid so we would just sum up these two values like zero zero of n plus one of n and then we would have the square of it now let us start the implementation we can have as we need the index n okay so first what we would do is we would declare a vector of what we can move forward with int but we are told that the answer can be very large so whenever you need to do this modular thing and you are doing this in an online judge compiler what you can do is you can just use this define thing okay now ln would be replaced with num so define vector of ln first would be the zero of size n plus 1 okay and then the same thing again for one also okay why do we have n plus 1 because we want to access the index 1 itself then we proceed forward then zero of 1 is equals to 1 of 1 is equals to 1 okay you can do this next we move forward to this we would start with the iteration of 2 so int i is equals to 2 i is less than equal to n and i plus plus okay then zero of i the valid string is zero of i minus 1 plus zero of plus 1 of i minus 1 okay because it can be clubbed with both it can be clubbed with one also zero also okay So it can be clubbed with both. So we are doing this. Then we have one of i is equals to zero of i minus one. We do have this value. Next, we move forward. We will just add the value of zero and one because we saw that zero of and one should be added. Next, we move forward and we do the square of it. Then we have it as an integer. Then we return it. Now let us compile and run and see. What values we have? Yes, we have the value as twenty-five. Okay, but we are told that the answer can be very large, so we need to print modulo ten to the power nine plus seven. So what we would do is every time writing ten to the power nine plus seven, we would just use const int m is equals to one e nine plus seven itself. Okay, then what we would do is after having the value of zero of i, okay, the zero of i. Modulo is equals to m. Then we would just assign it to zero of i minus one, which is already there. Then we would have val modulo is equals to m. Okay. Then after multiplying the val also, we would return val modulo is equals to m itself. Now let us compile and run. And yes, it is true. For the sample test cases, let us just submit and see. And yes, we got an AC. Now, after this, we have implemented. Let us do the time complexity analysis and see if this is the intended time complexity or not. So, this declaration and all is taking constant time. Then this is again constant time. Then this loop is running from. Two to n, that is big O of n. Then at each step, we are just adding. So calculations and all would also take constant time. This is also too constant. So for each n operation, we are doing constant operation. That is why we are having this. Next, we are doing calculations again. Okay, arithmetic calculation. This is again constant. So the upper bound that we have achieved up till now is big O of n for the time complexity. Let us just see if this is the intended time. Yes, this is the intended time complexity. Now let us see. For the space complexity, if we go and see the space complexity, then we are declaring an array of two n plus one and two n plus one. Other than that, we are only declaring variables that is val. So this is nothing but big two n, but constants are ignored. So the time compl space complexity is big of n, which is the intended space complexity. So that's it for today. Thank you and have a nice day.